Let's talk to Connor Campbell. He's a financial analyst at Spreadex. Connor, very good morning to you. Right, let's talk about some stocks that are reporting this week. Let's kick off with ASOS, the stock code, the mnemonic ASC, um, up just under 3% for 2018. What's going on here? Yeah, it's been an interesting sort of start to the year for ASOS. I think in mid-March it hit all-time highs of £77. It finally sort of beat the £70 all-time high that had been in place since, I think, January 2014, sort of completing that three, four-year, uh, you know, increase back to those levels. However, it's, you can clearly see from the chart, it's not been smooth sailing. Yeah. It's sort of every time it's, it's made a new all-time oh, high, it, it falls back, back quite yep. sharply. As we've seen, you know, it hit £77 in mid-March, it's pulled back quite sharply since then. But uh, broadly in an upwards direction. In okay. terms of its figures, uh, January update for the four months to the end of December, group revenue was up uh, 28% to £808 million. Pounds. Again, typically strong double-digit growth for, for ASOS in the US. I think growth was up 32%, rest of the world 34%. In the UK and uh, EU, around the 28-30% mark. However, it did say that its full year uh, capital expenditure would be at the upper end of 200 million to 220 million. I think that's one of the things that's perhaps undermined the stock slightly in 2018. Investors concerned about how much that's going to eat into its full year profits. Half year figures on, on, on Wednesday, I think, as long as it gives. As long as it gives us a sign that its profits aren't going to be too eroded by that capital expenditure and that capital expenditure hasn't gone too much beyond £220 million. Obviously, it'd be great if it's a bit lower than that. Right. Client-wise? Client-wise, still buying around. Since it's fallen back towards £70, they've been buying around those levels. Right. I think they're, they're interested in, you know, in an ASOS in the stock full stop. Obviously, it's a stock that there's quite a lot of uh, risk attached to it now just because of how sharp the it has climbed. But I will say, I guess it's pulled back. Effect, you know, it's pulled back, pulled back like seven pounds in the last few weeks. I guess that does give it a bit of room to bounce on Wednesday in the aftermath of its half year figures. Understood. Let's move on to Tesco's um, down just a little bit more than one percent this year. Um, I always think this is a sort of almost a bellwether for the UK economy. Uh, what are your thoughts? Here? Yeah, it's interesting. Tesco, you know, in a very difficult stock at the moment, the supermarket sector, it's not easy. You, you've had uh, rising food, uh, food inflation prices and things like that, and unwillingness to pass that on to investors, uh, customers, sorry. However, Tesco has been very, very consistent. I think for the first three quarters of its, uh, of its financial year, it's been posting 2.1% to 2.3% light for that growth each quarter, which is very, very consistent. And even more so given the sector it's in. I think in Chris over Christmas it disappointed a tad, but that's only because investors were expecting a very strong 3.2% rise in light flight growth in the UK and it only posted, I say only, it only posted 1.9%, which is still very strong for sort of any UK retailer at the moment. In terms of its full year figures on, on Wednesday, I think they're expected to be incredibly strong. I think yes. uh, revenue is expected to be up 2.3% to £57 uh, billion. Pounds. Then pre-tax profits, expect, uh, excluding one-off items, it's expected to jump 60% to £1.1 billion. Pounds. So that's very strong. I think that should help help uh, sort of Tesco get away from the £2 mark once again. Our clients have been buying fairly strongly around the £2 mark, I think heading into what should be a fairly blockbuster headline figure for Tesco on Wednesday. Understood. Let's wrap up with WH Smiths, um, down 15% in 2018, the yeah. stock code SMWH. Yeah, this has to be put in context of what was a ludicrously strong 2017 for WH Smiths. I think it was up 48%. It ended 2017 on an all-time high. So I think this is just somewhat of a correction since then. Interestingly, nothing has actually really changed for w, uh, w Smith, WH Smiths. Sorry. I think uh, in its January update, uh, uh, travel sales were up 7% with 3% light flight growth. However, high street sales were down 5% with 4% light flight decline. That's roughly the same as it's been for the last, you know, God knows how long, the last few years. However, I think the kicker here was that it said that whilst margins had improved year on year, they were significantly lower than what uh, W.H. Smith had been expecting, mainly due to stuff like... Uh, like spoof humour books not selling as much as they did the year before. You know, W.H. Smith recently, especially its high street, uh, the retail sector, has become dependent on these sort of cyclical one purchase things. You know, it was it was adult colouring books a few years ago. Then most recently, it's been spoof humour books. Those things sort of have a one year cycle, really. Right. You know, it's one Christmas and then they're done. Right. That, that's the fad for the year over. And W. H. Smith doesn't seem to have found that that, that okay. next one just uh, yet. This Christmas, I think, suffered from that. 
So you've got that margins issue. However, like, like I said, it did say that margins have been up year on year. And if it can show with its half year figures on Thursday that they have improved, even if they haven't improved as much as WH Smith has expected, then that, you know, God, it's down 15%. There's plenty of room for it to, investors were, uh, showed they were more than willing to, willing to accept its flaws last year. There's plenty of room, I guess, for it to bounce this year. Our client's been fairly heavily buying around the £20 mark then, looking for some kind of bounce following its half year figures on Thursday. Connor, thank you very much, Luke, for that wrap.